I don't care how that click-through rate looks compared to the latest to the other ones. Everything always needs to be improved, and I get that. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. Welcome to Marketing Interruption, a daily podcast powered by Blue Tusker that interrupts your day with marketing news, tips and strategies from an entrepreneur who lives and breeds marketing. Now, let the interruption begin with your host, Andrew Maff. Hello and welcome to episode number 65 of the Marketing Interruption Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Maftone, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I stood on a fucking soapbox all week. (laughs) We're recapping, and I feel like I ranted on every single episode this week. So I know on Monday, uh, I went through, Monday and Tuesday were very similar episodes. One catered more towards SOPs, the other one catered more towards project management system. And there's a lot of people who, who I've learned have don't really understand the differences of them and you can you could in theory do set up asana where process street wouldn't wouldn't necessarily be needed but there's not a lot of documentation that goes into asana it's more structural and then the documentation comes in through process street so just as a recap of what i was talking about monday and tuesday we use this internal this is the tech stack we use internally and then it's what we typically advise our sellers to use just because we know how to use it. Um, we have Asana as our project management system where we template projects. And as we learn stuff, we edit the template so that next time we replicate the template, we know we need to do something new. Uh, and you can easily replicate a task within that project and push it to a live project. There's You got to get Asana to understand it. Um, then there's Process Street, which is for SOPs, where it's more documentation and videos and examples of how to do things. Could you put that information into Asana? Yes. The way that it's done though, isn't as nice. And then obviously I wanna know who did what, which you could in theory still do in Asana, it'd be kind of messy, but I wanna know when they did it. And sometimes I need to submit stuff. And again, there's ways that you could put things into Asana to set that up for procedure, but it definitely get messy. I'd mentioned this on Monday, the Sun is an amazing platform. The biggest issue and the biggest benefit of it is that it's so customizable. So you can get kind of messy. So I prefer Process Street. Plus, you can kind of keep all your SOPs in one place. Um, but Asana, SOPs, why you should have them. It's an asset. Selling the company becomes a lot easier or training someone new becomes a lot easier. Um, then I talked about, oh, attribution. Ugh, God, kill me fucking hate attribution it's such a pain in the ass it's a pain in the ass because there's from an agency side it's a pain in the ass because basically i have to explain like i know facebook says it's doing this and google says it's doing that but we we really think you should put your budget here and explaining it is so difficult because it's kind of a foreign theory and explaining to someone like hey i just need you to go with my gut is not really uh great no matter how many case studies you throw at them um the attribution issue is, you know, the the fluidity of how people purchase is, it, it's ridiculous. It's all over the place. You don't really know what's happening. Sometimes you get so much credit for Google and you're like, oh, Google's doing so well. We're getting so much from there. Let's spend more money on Google. But really what happened was your billboard did well. And so now all of a sudden people are just searching your name. And really what that is is brand awareness, in which case that's social media. So really you should be spending more money on social media so that your Google ads become less and less expensive. So it's it's this messy thing where you kind of have to know the life of your product and the lifetime of your customer and then what the average path of purchase is. And then you just have to look at everything holistically. You have to sit back and stop nit- nitpicking those tiny little numbers. And I'm ranting again, but I'm gonna. Where you have to, I get these sellers sometimes who like nitpick these tiny little numbers. They're like, yeah, but the click rate on this one campaign is just not that good. And I don't think we should increase it and blah, blah, blah. And I go, okay, we're getting into an hour long conversation about the click through rate on this one campaign. But if we go high level and we take a look at what happened here, you spent $10,000, we made $70,000. That is what happened. I don't care how that click through rate looks compared to the latest to the other ones. Everything always needs to be improved, and I get that. But you also have to take everything with a grain of salt. Your metrics will tell you what you want them to tell you. 
Yeah, that makes sense, right? Your metrics will your metrics will tell you what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that right. Um, so you're gonna paint whatever picture you want to paint, but you have to go with your gut. And is it if you feel like it's working, then just leave it and don't get any deeper in it if you don't have to. If it's not working, then you have a different story, and then you have to get into it, which is why you should still be obviously recording everything. Um, and then uh, we talked about shipping factor of myth. I said it's a myth. However, it's a fact that you should look into it and try to do it if you can, but it may not be necessary. Um, so a lot went on this week, did a lot of ranting. So I'm hoping that this podcast doesn't slowly turn into Andrew Vents about the bullshit in, in digital marketing, uh, but or e-commerce in general. Um, but I did want to mention another book. I figured I got a ton of freaking books. So I'll start mentioning some of them. So I read this one a while ago. This was Top of Mind by uh, John Hall. It's a great book about specifically about branding and how you basically stay top of mind for a lot of people. And it can kind of tie into that whole attribution thing, which I'm not, I'm not going to go down again, I promise. But it's a great book, great read about branding and how you can stay front of mind and how these big companies do it. And it's it was such a good book. It's now at a point now where usually – depending on who we're bringing on, depending on which department they may be in or what campaign they may be working on, I typically have this as one of our required reads of just, you got to read this book and it'll help your mindset. Um, so I definitely suggest testing out or uh, reading it. And then uh, per usual, please send me an email if you have any questions or anything you want me to discuss on the show, marketing interruption at bluetusker.com or just message me on wherever you may be watching this platform, whether it's YouTube or on our blog or maybe a Twitter or whatever, I don't really care. Uh, we'll find you. But per usual, please rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your wife. Uh, and I will see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's marketing interruption. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. And don't forget to email marketinginterruption at bluetusker.com with any marketing questions you'd like to have answered on the show. And head over to Marketing Interruption bluetusker.com to catch up on past episodes. Until next time, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.